Battleground Productions presents Brass, the audio series, episode 20, The End of the Affair. The year is 1885, but not one that would be familiar to you. For this is a world that differs in many ways from the one in our history books. For while civic unrest is a not entirely uncommon occurrence in the London we know, our own past does not feature such an unlikely sight as an armed battle being fought on a fashionable Mayfair street, pitting police against thuggish costermongers and corrupt constables. The chaos is terrific, but in the midst of it, the police sergeant and Ponder Wright connect. Sergeant! Mr. Wright! Time to retreat. So glad to hear you say that, sir. Step lively, Sergeant. I've just been informed that a bomb is minutes away from dropping on this street by an airship. Good God! Men, double stop! As the corps of battered policemen leave, in the stylish Mayfair home they have come in aid of, there is a gun battle going on, with the invaders attempting to charge the entry hall, only to be repelled by Lord Brass and his servants in the staircase hall, and Lady Brass and hers in the library. Madeline, Drake, you all right in there? All right. Running low on ammunition, however. For your... Webley. Have you looked in the desk? Which drawer? Secret drawer, under the topmost left one. Ah, thank you. Drake, are you there? Yes, sir. Oh, oh. You're here. Now I'm here, sir. Why, it's a talent you have, Drake. Yes, sir. During the last rush, Millicent was hit. I'm all right. It's a flesh wound. Went right through. Still, she needs looking after. And our nurse is in the library with Madeline. Time to fall back, sir. I don't see any other solution, Drake. The fighting outside seems to have only grown more violent. Certainly, there seem to be more participants. Then, since it seems unlikely we can protect our premises any longer, time to engage our escape plan. You know that we are prepared to fight to the last maiden footman, sir. I appreciate that, but you are all too good of domestic staff for me to risk losing any of you. I appreciate the compliment. Gather the servants and get them ready to evacuate, while Madeline and I get to the vehicle. I started inflating the gas bag with the tanks 20 minutes ago, sir. Excellent. According to my calculations, it should be ready for flight in 20 minutes. Very good, sir. I'll go tell Mistress. Have the enemy retreated from the entry hall? Let me find out. Drake? She's back here, Benjamin. Doing quite all right, sir. Ha. Good. Now the rest of you, we're about to begin a tactical withdrawal. Covering fire on five. Right after this, fire into the hallway for ten seconds on four, three, two, one. Good to have you three back. Margaret, look to Millicent. Yes, sir. Come on, dear. Let's get that cleaned up and bandaged. We're going to have you all follow Mrs. Drake while Lady Bross and I use the escape vehicle. A miniature airship? Really, Benjamin? Makes better sense than a tunnel. And speaking of tunnels, Mrs. Drake will lead you all back down to the basement and the tunnel to the coach house. Speaking of tunnels, why don't we just leave with the servants? We are the target of this attack, my dear, not our staff. If we don't leave separately, we're a greater risk to them. Fair enough. Drake, gather the servants and head to the coach house. Are you quite sure that we can't repel the invaders, sir? There's your answer, Drake. They've got enough ammunition to take some shots at an empty hallway, and I fear that is more than we have. And from the noises outside, we won't be receiving any help immediately. Very well, sir. Stop. Fall in. Kill him. Kill him, you fools. I wonder if that's who I think it might be. Father. It is. In here, Cyril. Hello, all. Master Cyril. Why did you return, my lad? Mind if I synchronize your watch to mine, father? On my count, 1247. Ah, mine was fast. Well, we have 13 minutes until a bomb is dropped on this house. How? From an airship, I believe. You believe? Told to me under interrogation from a reliable source. All right. The clock is ticking, everyone. Drake, take the servants down the... Back stairway down to the basement. Come along, all. Remember, we've walking wounded. Help Stevie and Millicent, but keep up your pace. If it's a bomb, you must get them out. The gate of the carriage house that leads to the back alley. We all know it, ma'am. We've been drilled. Good. Good luck. We'll be in touch soon. See you on the other side. Indeed. Now, family, all we need to do is get to the roof. To your airship. It will be ready to fly by... How long? I'm sure I can get it into the air. Benjamin, that's not good enough. Very well. Cyril. Hmm? I want you to run up to the roof and see if the airship looks fully inflated. You hear that? What? Someone knocking on the window shutters. They're on the second floor. 
Ah, proud warriors. Courtesy of the Red Widow. I hate that woman. Meanwhile, on the roof of the neighboring townhouse, Gwendolyn Dross has arrived after evacuating every other residence up and down the block. From the height of the chimney, she looks out on her own rooftop and sees... A rapidly inflating miniature airship. And... Several grappling hooks attached to the back wall of the house. She steadies herself against the chimney, taking aim with her gun just as a grey-cloaked figure sticks his head above the roof. And with that, she's leaping up and over the pediment, down to her own roof. One down. Let's see what's on the end of this grappling hook. Ah, a cloud warrior. I'll take that sword if you don't mind. Two down. And two more behind me. God, fall, damn you. I need to get to my family. You up here, Gwen? Cyril! Yes? Help! Oh! You there? The gentleman in the grey robes with the swords? Huh? Why would you big strong men give the girl all the fun? I'll take you both on with one hand held behind my back. Cyril? You see? Your sword's against my little walking stick with one hand held behind my back. Cyril, can we both... Oh, oh my! These gentlemen have katanas, Gwen. I noticed. You say it's the sharpest sword in the East. What do you think? Well, the one on the left just shaved the tip of my waistcoat. Oh, my. Which believe me, rather, I was fond of that waistcoat. Don't get angry, Cyril. And don't get showy. Come at you, gents! Wow, warriors. I had a spot to bother with your friends downstairs a few minutes ago. Cyril, keep them away from the airship. Doing my best. Gwen! Rubbish, you're being showy. Ah. Oh, Cyril. Never fear, Gwen. They missed me by a mile. It's not you I was worried about. Not me. End this. All right. And done. Yes, we are. Uh, no, we aren't, Gwen. We've got five minutes by my watch. Gwendolyn, are you all right, my dear? Cyril. I'm fine. So am I. But look at the airship. Oh, dear. Oh, my. Sorry, it was a sword fight. Options. A basement is better than a roof if a bomb has been dropped. There may be no bomb. Lord Whitestone may have stopped it. Best case scenarios, I do not trust them. Perhaps there's something in my lab, which is also in the basement. You heard your father, the basement. Won't this just be more building to fall on us, Father? Perhaps instead we should run to the street. We have to assume a sizable blast radius. Cyril, time. 12.58, Father. I hope the basement's reinforced. Don't worry. I have a plan. I always have a plan. At that very moment, 8,000 feet in the sky above, a Royal Mail dirigible is approaching, one whose crew go about their duties under dangerous and watchful eyes. So... Captain. Yes, sir. Do you like your job? I do, sir. As a day-to-day experience, it's a good job? Yes, sir. But you wouldn't necessarily want to die for it. Mm, Not if I could help it, sir. I am so glad to hear that. And that's why you're going to do our job and drop the payload at the exact time and place that we tell you to do so. Um, sir, our payload is mail. It is. And a bomb. We've added a bomb. Ray, it's coming up. You sure? Matches up with the map and everything. All right, then. Fortunately, we only have to be so precise. It's a very big bomb. What's that noise? Answer? I have... No idea, sir. Want me to go take a look? No, I need you here. Besides, all our men up above are professionals. It's not like any of these male men are going to put up much of a fight. I'll just give a quick look, see. All right. Hello? Ah, is it just you that is left? What? I have beaten and, I believe, killed all of the other men who have taken control of this airship. No, it's not just me. There's others. I think you are bluffing. Bluffing? I'm not bluffing. You know what this airship is carrying, mate. Along with the mail? Yes. A bomb, I believe. That's right. A bomb big enough to level a city street. 
and the lever to set it off is right here. All I need to do is just give it a little shove this way and it drops right out the payload. I see. And what can I do to stop you from giving that lever a shove? Promise me that you will let me go and not lay a hand upon me. Hmm. To say that would be a lie. But still... No but stills! That's it! Lever's pushed! No! Oh, good job, sir. But too late! For even as Lord Whitestone peers after the descending figure, he sees falling from the belly of the airship dozens of canvas bags of mail, as well as another bag whose contents are advertised as capable of leveling a city street. He watches it fall, and then with horror, a moment later... Oh my god! What was that, sir? I think it was the Brass family. Can it be? Have we just witnessed the final chapter in the history of a most extraordinary clan? And if not, how could our friends have possibly survived having a massive explosive dropped upon their heads from 8,000 feet? Will London, indeed the whole of England, now quailed beneath the ominous shadow of the Crime Minister? Join us for the answers next season, when we continue with our story of the first family of the realm, Brass. Brass is manufactured by Battleground Productions. For credits and more information on Brass, including our films and live stage shows, go to battlegroundproductions.org and find us on Facebook.